Hi and welcome to Evidence Doctor. Last night, Anthony Joshua lost for the second time in his professional career against Alexander Ushek. Joshua said he couldn't see in round nine after an eye injury sustained in Saturday's 12 round fight with the Ukrainian at Tottenham Hotspur Football Stadium. In this video, I'm going to discuss how common orbital fractures are, how they're usually evaluated and how they're managed, just to help give you a flavor of what type of injury this is. I've done this by drawing upon a peer-reviewed scientific paper, and if you want to learn more, I've included the link to the full paper in the description box beneath this video. So what exactly happened? Joshua's promoter, Eddie Hearn, suggested the fighter may have suffered a broken eye socket. Asked after the fight what went wrong, Joshua said, I couldn't see in the ninth round, couldn't see anything really because my eye was shut. It was a good experience because in adversity, you've just got to learn to control yourself, stay on top of things. So when I couldn't see anything, it's the first time this happened in a fight. Until a proper assessment is done by the medical professionals, we can't be sure that AJ suffered an orbital fracture. However, this is what has been suggested by his camp and this is what he will be assessed for. In this video, we look at the scientific evidence behind orbital fractures to help you guys understand how common they are, the basics of how they're assessed and managed, and any complications that could arise from this. So how common are orbital fractures? Well, the paper suggested fractures of the orbit are common and challenging to manage. They deserve special consideration because surgical or observational management may result in compromise to vision and or globe position. Most orbital fractures occur in males in their second decade of life and are typically due to trauma. Orbital fractures are broadly referred to as blowout fractures. However, not all orbital fractures are isolated orbital injuries. What I mean by this is that they may be associated with other non-orbital injuries involving the head, the neck or the spine. So doctors assessing the person with the orbital fracture will do a full assessment of all of these related structures. The medical team assessing fractures should adopt the basic principles and common principles of fracture and trauma management. In patients with orbital fractures, associated eye injuries are also present in up to 29% of the patients. It's therefore important to consider the involvement of specialist eye surgeons known as ophthalmology in the management of these cases. Now, I can't stress how important it is an eye exam is done to prevent subsequent eye issues. According to the scientific study, blindness associated with orbital fractures has been reported between 1 and 10%. In general, it's wise to obtain orbital imaging in all patients who suffer orbital trauma. A study by Holmgreen found that 12% of the trauma patients who had head CT, which is a special type of imaging, also had maxillofacial fractures. So you could pick up other fractures that you weren't initially suspecting. Of course, the actual examination and assessment will depend on the individual medical team assessing the patient and they'll weigh up the risks that they need to assess. So in terms of management, following the diagnosis of an orbital blowout fracture and the ocular examination, the initial management is to prevent further injury to the globe whilst determining whether or not surgical intervention is needed. It's important to educate the patient to avoid blowing their nose because air from the sinonasal tract can be forced into the orbit. This can result in an orbital compartment syndrome potentially, which could lead to blindness. Periorbital edema, also known as swelling, can be lessened with things like cold compresses and by keeping the head of the bed elevated. It's also important to check that the eyelids of the patient can close to protect the surface of the eyeball. Now, a decision for surgery will be down to experts and timing will depend on the nature of the injury. Deformity and vision impairment can occur from these injuries. And whilst surgery is intended to prevent these problems, it can also potentially create them. Therefore, surgical approach and implant selection for reforming the eye, if needed, should be carefully considered. The decision to observe a fracture and delay surgery or proceed with surgery immediately is based on the clinical exam findings, orbital imaging, and assessment of the risk and benefit of either option. In someone like a box, the recovery time can be long and the medical team will be thinking about the risks of future injury to that patient given the patient's inherent career. So in conclusion, I hope you learned a little bit about how common orbital fractures are, the basics of how they're assessed and managed. Remember, these are just the common principles and individual management varies from patient to patient. I can't comment on AJ's specific injury because I've not been involved in any of his care. I therefore hope the video was useful. I wish him all the very best in his recovery. And if you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, bye.